Hey, this is Micah. Uh, I just read a um, announcement. Is that what you would call this? An announcement from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, that is, and I'm looking at it on another screen here. It's Art in Meeting House Four Years or foyers, and entryways to reflect a deeper reverence for Jesus Christ. This is 11th May, 2020. And uh, in a letter today, the First Presidency is asking local leaders to ensure that the aesthetic feel in the foyers and entryways to the face weekly worship spaces reflects an even deeper reverence for the Lord Jesus Christ. This effort supports President Russell M. Nelson's call over the past 18 months to emphasize that Jesus Christ is at the center of his church. Today's later says local leaders and facility managers should work together to assess the placement and obstructed, unobstructed display of Christ-focused art in the foyers and main entries of each of the face meeting houses around the world. Leaders can continue to choose from a selection of art that features the Savior of the world. Most of these paintings can be downloaded in the photo uh, carousel below. Oh, that's a cool picture. I'm just staring at a picture of, of Jesus kind of showing his hands to a woman with a red scarf. I like that kind of oil-looking painting style. Um, so, I mean, where does it continue here? Uh, so it says, place existing artwork that depicts the Savior himself or the Savior ministering to others. In the meeting house entries and foyers, examining existing artwork to ensure that it is appropriately framed, displayed, and in good condition, move other artwork to another location within the facility, or remove it altogether, uh, choose replacement art if needed, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So basically, what they want is uh, instead of a bunch of, you know, uh, I'm staring at a um, display case with was that missionaries or just maybe people in the oh there's missionaries on the top of it and then something below it and removing it and instead putting jesus christ there um and so basically we we need to have less stupid stuff more jesus and i read this today and i said holy cow um i i had received this as I don't even call this. I would call it revelation, personal revelation to me back in June of 2013. Okay. And I thought I would just read this to you because I think this is, this was a, a now that it's weird because this started at around the craze of the Marvel universe. Like this is just kind of picked up. And then seven years, I would think in the last couple years with the uh, Avengers end game, we've reached the climax of that. Right. And so that's kind of what's happened over the last seven years. And I had this personal little revelation. And I thought that this is something that uh, might be useful for other people in other units and other branches. Um, and you might take something from this. So this is my uh, little interesting experience, spiritual experience I had at church, uh, June 2nd, uh, 2013. So Ash and I, that's my wife. Running a little late to sacrament meeting, which for us, that means showing up 10 or 15 minutes or 10 to 5. I did that backwards. Minutes early first is our normal time of showing up at least 15 minutes early. So for us being late, we like to show up 15 minutes early. So if we're, you know, cutting it within that five window minute window right before church, that's late for us. OK, on walking into the church, we were greeted by many fine members of the Kenora branch. That's where I'm at. Uh, that's not a secret. You can look that up online. Many of whom were priesthood holders, all of which were chatting happily and carefree in the hallways and in the sacrament room itself. Now, I want to ask you, as members of the church, does this does this scene seem unfamiliar to you? You know, does this seem unfamiliar to you? You walk in, everyone's just talking and, and chitter chattering out in the halls. Okay. After getting past the loiters in the hall and making my way into the sacrament room itself, I had a strong impression and desire to find Jesus. Okay, why you might ask. It is funny going from branch to branch or ward to ward and seeing how the members can change the atmosphere or the building of the exact same gospel so much. You can have anything from devout members who truly seek after Christ to wards full of members who draw near to me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. To this branch that can only be described 
as losing sight of Jesus altogether. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean a mentality that would rather support an idea of what they think a branch uh, is versus what the Church of Jesus Christ is. Now, who who has been saying this? President Nelson. This is not the this is not the the Church of San Diego, California. This is not the Church of Mesa, Arizona. This is not the Church of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is not the Kenora Church. This is the Church of Jesus Christ. And that is what the prophet has been saying. We need to realize, and with this new emphasis, continuing on. Okay, this is a mentality that would rather support 10, 30, or maybe even 40 years of incorrect doctrine or procedure or traditions based solely off of the fact that this is what has always been done in Kenora or anywhere. Pick a, pick a location. Look, this is just the way we do things in Weezer, Idaho. This is just the way we do things in Philadelphia. This is, hey, what about Polynesia? This is just the, what we do here, you know? We wear dresses, right? It's okay for Hawaiian women here to be in, you know, tube tops because and doing dances for the prophet because that's just what we do in Hawaii. That's just that's just the way we are in the Polynesian. This is what we do here, okay? Versus trying to do what Jesus wants and has asked us to do in his church. A mentality that would rather spend most of its pulpit time talking about families, money, health issues traditions saying this could be anything hawaiian arizona weezer tradition scouts which by the way i predicted man it, back in 2010 i was saying the church is going to get out of out of the scout program here me here i am again fish fries etc versus spending its pulpit time focused on faith on the lord jesus christ repentance baptism duty to god etc so I find that I spend most of my time when I go into uh, a unit surrounded by good people, people who are honest, hardworking, decent folk, but they're not Christians, let alone members of Jesus Christ Church. So whenever I find myself in that situation, I feel like I'm back on the streets of Philadelphia, knocking on doors of hardworking, decent people who would tell me, look, I'm clean. I don't break the law. I don't cheat on my wife. I pay my bills. I try to be an honest and upright man, but I just can't get into Jesus. I'm sorry. I suppose that since there are people who draw near to me with lips, but their hearts are far from me, there would by the same right be people who draw near to me with their hands and their feet, but their hearts are far from me. I suppose this is exactly what Jesus Christ was talking about when he said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So needless to say, having the prompting to look for Jesus didn't really come as any surprise when entering his church. I find myself having to do so often. The pictures in this building, so this is the Kenora branch, are horrible, with many with with more room on the walls given to billboards, chief scout, missionary plaques, etc., than is clearly given to Jesus. In fact, at this time, there really wasn't even a single Jesus picture. There wasn't one. And there was only a couple that even had him in the picture at all. I said, this is a problem that really needs to be addressed. So if you can't find him on the walls, so I can't find Jesus on the walls, so where do I find him? Oh, that's right, the sacrament table, obviously. So as I sit down, my eyes are drawn over to the sacrament table. Empty. There is nothing on the table. No one around it. No one even attempting to set it up. As priesthood holders chat in the halls gaily. Sacrament meeting itself is starting in less than five minutes. So I stand back up, leave my family, make my way over to the table, and, and I start getting everything in place, and I start setting up the sacrament. Okay, I, I'm not one of the young men, and I'm not one of the people that work with the young men who happen to be standing out in the halls. I put the cloth down, 
This symbolizes the cloth that was laid in the tomb when Jesus, with Jesus when he was buried. Then I took two trays, both for bread, and placed them on the cloth, symbolizing his body that he freely gave. And then grabbing the two trays for the water, which symbolizes blood that was spilt for us, and I headed for the kitchen to place the plastic cups in them and fill them with water, which is the purest water that we currently, the purest liquid that we currently have. In the past, grape juice straight from the vine was used as it was the purest substance around. When I was finished, I brought the trays out and placed them beside the empty bread trays. At this point, right now, President uh, Clark, who was the branch president at the time, uh, shows up and asks me, is anyone setting up the sacrament? I reply that no one was, obviously, and that I was doing so. He then proceeded to thank me and sit down in the front of the, 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 the congregation. I then realized that we had no bread. I looked in the kitchen and all that I could find was frozen bread. I talked to President Clark, church is now starting, who tells me that all we have is the frozen bread in the kitchen and to make do and to put it in the microwave. So I head back out into the kitchen and am stopped in the hallway by another priesthood holder who has been watching me the whole time, doing nothing to help. This priesthood holder says to me, hey, Micah, can you get the bread for the sacrament? Um, yeah, I actually got the whole sacrament ready, not just the bread. That was my response. This priest holder then says, that's great, and then goes and sits down. So I go into the kitchen. I look through the bread in the freezer. Half of the bread has frozen or freezer burn on it. It's black. It's, it's totally black, like burnt toast black. And I'm the only, and I'm only able to find two slices in what's left of the bread that are salvageable. I then have to microwave them. I then bring them out to the missionaries who are now sitting at the table ready to bless. Sacrament comes and goes. The bread itself tastes so bad, I actually find it difficult to swallow. Brother Lad, God rest his soul. Brother Lad was a good, uh, a, a good brother in uh, our branch here that actually passed away a couple years ago. Brother Lad on the stand takes his bread, swallows it, and a look comes over his face like, what did I just eat? He turns to President Clark, and they share a few whispering words back and forth, to which Brother Lad seems satisfied. He nods, and then they stop talking. Today, this day, happens to be fast and testimony meeting. Anyone who knows me, or really anyone in my family, knows that we really don't get up to give our testimony often, relying on the Spirit to dictate when we do give a testimony, if at all which I believe from what I have read and understand is the way it's supposed to be. This Sunday was different. I actually felt impressed this Sunday, strongly so, to get up and give a testimony. The words that I should speak flowed through my head, and I could see myself sharing it, how I would say it, what I should say. All was revealed in a matter of moments, in perfect clarity. Here is what went through my mind. I have been thinking about superheroes a lot lately. Iron Man, Superman, Hulk, uh, Hulk, Thor. These are amazing, quite frankly, awesome individuals of justice and right who battle the forces of darkness and evil in spectacular ways. I've been thinking about all the money that is spent, millions upon millions of dollars that gets spent to show off these heroes in the form of movies, posters, previews, and so on. I think about the time invested in enjoying these heroes, watching them, glorifying them, talking about them, remembering them. And I am left with one realization, sorry, that of Jesus Christ being the greatest hero of them all. Jesus, the son of God, who lived a perfect life, who took death by its icy clutches and won. Jesus was the hero that did battle with the devil himself for our souls, who took our sins and owned them, beating Satan, death, and sin. Can you think of another hero that was purer, who was more powerful, who was more humble, 
who bested a greater supervillain. Neither can I. And how much money, how much time, how much remembering and love do we give him? We can't even give him good bread to remember him by in his own church. A church that I know he owns. A church that he bought with his life. Run by members who I know he paid for in drops of blood. With our faces engraved upon the palms of his hands and with our walls continually before him. We can't even get him decent bread. Brothers and sisters, I know that Christ is the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the Prince of Peace, the greatest superhero in this world, nay, this universe has ever seen. I know that this is his church, and I know that we, as members of his church, bought with his blood, need to remember him and what he has done for us and what he continues to do for us in order to be saved. I love him and pray that he knows how much I look up to him and desire to be like him. The words were so clear, the message so small, the scope so small. I sat and waited for Brother Ladd to finish his opening testimony, to start testimony meeting. Brother Ladd finishes, and before he can even sit down, somebody jumps up behind me, literally the seat behind me. No big deal, I think. I can always go up after. The person gets up and starts and finishes their testimony. I'll summarize the testimony given. I'm having problems with my faith. Life is so hard. I don't show up to church often or keep the commandments and my life really sucks. I don't know why. I think, wow, I better get up. But somebody else jumps up. I am having problems with my faith too. Trials suck. I don't read my scriptures either, and most likely don't keep the commandments. Life sucks. Why? I think, double wow, I better get up. Two people now stand up at the same time. I just want you to know that everything you said makes perfect sense. My wife has migraines and suffers from depression. Well, so do I. But life gets hard. I'm an ex-alcoholic. I suffer from mental problems, but I try to get better. Amen. This continues for an hour. So I just got to go to a graduation. How awesome was that? And my daughter in England is doing great. And we are going to have two pharmacists in the branch. How cool is that? Amen. I have Asperger and was just diagnosed with PTSD due to an incident that happened while I was working at a hotel. They said I would never read and write and now I have a job. Amen. We now we are now literally 10 minutes past the hour and brother lad has to stand up and end the meeting. I didn't get a stand up. I was actually prompted, actually had the spirit tell me to get up and was not given time. And for what? People do not even wait to be prompted to give testimonies. They just do like it is share and tell time in primary where everyone needs to talk. Like it was an AA meeting with everyone standing, not because the spirit dictated it, but rather because everyone just needs time to stand, say their name, what addiction they're struggling with. A talk -moni, a story -moni, an aa -moni, a travel -moni, a sob -moni, a depressed -moni, a confess -moni, and the list goes on. I was left befuddled as to why I felt so prompted to stand up and why I was not given a chance from start to finish to stand up and speak. Then the greatest of the realizations of the whole day hit me. Christ isn't given time in the world. He isn't given time in our lives, our families, not even in his own church. Not only that, but those prompted by the Holy Spirit to stand and point people back to him in his own church, are not given time to speak. If he isn't given time, the Lord, then how in the world could I, myself, and expect myself to be given time? For the first time in my life, I had a real realization of just how easy apostasy is and just how hard it must have been for the apostles of old to go out and point people back 
to the very man they had just slain. People are inherently selfish, myself included. This generation takes it to a whole new level, pushing things of God and Christ to the back burner, giving all of our time and attention to things that canker. How much do I do the very same thing? How much time do I give Christ? If I had troubles getting moments of clarity like this with my life the way that it is, how much more difficult is it for others whose lives are completely consumed by desires of the natural man and who openly spew those desires over Christ's very own pulpit? The wheat and the tares are fully ripened. That message was for you and for you alone, my son, as you are the only one who can understand it. Make Christ the center of your lives, not the eye of the storm. And I just, you know, I, I just want to end this with my testimony that I know that President Nelson is a prophet of God. I know he's a prophet of God. And that he is desperately trying to do what I have said in this paper. He is desperately saying the time is running out. He is desperately saying you need to start making Jesus Christ the center of your lives. This is his church. This is the new symbol of the church. It's Jesus. We need to put pictures of Jesus up. We need to stop talking about the fish fry. We need to start about getting because time is up brothers and sisters, the time to worry about the fish fry is past. If you're worrying about the fish fry at this time, you are going to be left behind. Get your life in order, get right with Jesus, and start listening to the prophet when he says, do it now. Time is running out. As my testimony in Jesus' name, amen.